In the lecture we've heard um, that the conductance of a narrow piece of wire featuring M modes connected to two very big reservoirs is quantized and that the quantizing resistance is given by h over e squared divided by the number m of modes supported in the central region. Now in this exercise we have a slightly modified setting where the contact regions are no longer infinite but they are of finite width and they support n occupied modes on both sides. We are now interested in the question what the resistance of this junction would be if we consider this n mode, these two n mode conductors, as the electron reservoirs for transport. The basic relation that we will use to solve this exercise um, is based on the idea that the current supported by a single mode at a particular energy, I will call this current I at a particular energy times the energy interval, is given by fundamental constants elementary charge divided by Planck's constant E over H times the width of this energy interval. So this current at a particular energy is carried by a single mode propagating in a particular direction Um, so, in case we have a wire with n modes, all these n modes would supply n times E over H dE um, in current, if we just consider, for example, the right moving states. Now, we also um, heard in the lecture that the total current is the difference between the right moving current and the left moving current. So for getting the right moving current we have to sum up all these energy contributions up to the Fermi energy for the right movers and for the left moving current we have to sum up the energy um, contribution for the left movers. So in order to get a finite current in an n-mode conductor, we need a difference in electrochemical potentials for the right movers and for the left movers. And this is indicated in this figure um, by mu left contact right movers and mu left contact left movers. So the total current that we have for example, in the left wire, um, would be given by E over H times the number of modes, N, times the contribution of the right movers, which are filled up to mu left contact right movers, minus the contribution of the left movers, which has the same prefactor, but now they are filled up to mu left contact left movers. Okay, so it is um, very crucial to see that a current can only be supported in one of these contact wires if the 
electrochemical potentials for right movers and left movers are different. If they would be the same, the total current would be zero. So since we are considering a transport situation where we want to look at particles being transmitted from the left side, let's say, to the right side and from the right side to the left side, we automatically already have to consider different electrochemical potentials for right movers and left movers in both contact regions. In order to go a step further in calculating the resistance of the structure, we will consider the occupation of right moving and left moving states in different regions of this conductor. And for this purpose, we look at um, cross sections, one taken in the left contact. We call this cross section number one. One taken in the left contact, but very close already to the coupling point into the narrow section. That's cross section two. We will consider the occupation of right and left moving states in the center of the narrow region, cross section three, and then symmetrically cross section four close to the coupling point and cross section five would be taken far in the contact region on the right hand side. So I've prepared the occupation probabilities for these five cross-sectional regions um, in order to uh, save time. And I will now step by step go through these five um, graphs and explain how they come about. So first we look at the right movers in cross section one and this refers to the first picture. The right movers in cross section one are filled up to the electrochemical potential mu left contact right movers. So if you like the Fermi distribution function, the equilibrium distribution function close to zero temperature would be a step function which gives probability one for states occupied below mu LR and this distribution drops quickly to zero for energies above mu LR. These are the right movers. The left movers are the other dis distribution that is filled up to one um, up to the energy mu left contact left movers and the difference between these two as we have seen here, is related to the current that flows in contact region one, through this cross section one. So in order to see how the current propagates through the structure, we will now uh, concentrate first on the right movers and go to cross section two. So the right movers from this region will propagate at all these energies between sub and bottoms up to mu LR um, to the right so that at cross section two we have essentially the same Fermi distribution function with cutoff energy mu left contact right movers. However, when we move on and couple into the narrow section which supports only m modes below the electrochemical potential um, there must be n minus m modes which are reflected at the entrance so looking at the left movers we realize that there is a fraction n minus m divided by n, which are those reflected n minus m modes, 
which are still filled up to the energy mu left contact right movers because these are the reflected right moving previous right moving states however there is now a second contribution to the left moving distribution function that's the upper part here and these are left moving states that originate from the narrow region supporting m modes but they are filled from the right hand side they are filled from the chemical potential in the right contact for the left movers because these left movers they have moved all the way coupled adiabatically into the section and have been transmitted without reflection into the left contact and they give this contribution up here which is filled up to the energy mu right contact left movers so we see that at this cross section too there is a strong non-equilibrium distribution for the left moving states which has an additional step the step height being given by n minus m divided by n now we move on to cross section 3 in cross section 3 we have a wire supporting m modes the right moving states of these m modes are occupied up to the electrochemical potential of the left contact for the right moving states mu lr so we get this distribution function here being filled up being one up to mu left contact right moving states the left moving states of the m modes are fed from the left con from the right contact and this right contact uh, the important electrochemical potential is that for the right contact left moving states so we have a different distribution function which cuts off at mu for the right contact but the left moving states now moving on to sec cross section number four we have the following situation let's first look at the right moving states right moving states that ha have coupled through um, the narrow section these are m modes now these m modes will now be distributed onto n modes in this contact so there's a fraction m over n states that will be occupied up to the electrochemical potential of the left contact for right moving states on the other hand there will be those states that come from the right contact move to the left but they are reflected at the entrance here and these are the remaining n minus m modes which are occupied up to the potential for the left movers from the right contact and this gives the uh, second part of the distribution this part of the distribution such for the right movers we again have a step like non-equilibrium um, distribution function at cross section number four now when we move further into the right contact the electrons forming this non-equilibrium distribution will have equilibrated such that again we have only equilibrium Fermi distribution functions for right movers and for left movers and the electrochemical potentials of the two must be different because the wire supports a finite current that's what we found here for the left contact but it of course also applies for the right contact so having understood these five cross sections we are now in a position to apply current conservation to solve for the resistance because current conservation requires 
that the current through this cross-sectional area at 1 is equal to the current through the cross-sectional area 2 is equal to the current at 3 is equal to the current at 4 is equal to the current at 5. So let's write down this current for the different cross-sections. The current, we call it I, in the left contact has already been worked out here. It is given by E over H times the number of modes times the difference mu left contact right movers minus mu left contact left movers. This current must be equal to the current at cross-sectional point 2. Now there we have non-equilibrium distributions and we have to be careful in writing down the current. So the prefactor of course will be E over H and for the right moving states we have the simple Fermi distribution function uh, up to energy uh, mu L R with n modes occupied. So there will be this prefactor n and we will have the energy states up to mu L R filled. Now for the left movers which we have to subtract from this there are these two contributions. There is the contribution n minus m over n filled up to mu l r and the contribution m over n filled up to mu r l. So we have to subtract um, a Fermi distribution n minus m divided by n times mu l r and we have, have to subtract m divided by n filled up to mu r l. In the central section the same current flows and the situation is again easier. We have E over H, we have M modes occupied and the difference of the electrochemical potentials for right and left movers is mu L right movers minus mu right contact left movers. Now again uh, in cross section 4 we have a more complicated situation. We have E over H prefactor, we have N modes again and now we have for the right movers m over n states a fraction of m over n filled up to mu l r plus a fraction of n minus m over n filled up to mu r l minus mu r l for the left movers. And now the last um, cross section would be um, prefactor E over H times n times the difference of the electrochemical potentials for right and left movers mu right contact right movers minus mu right contact left movers. So this is current conservation in this structure. We can use this current conservation now to work out the voltage differences that an electron encounters that for example moves from the left to the right. This voltage difference would be given by the starting chemical potential mu L right movers minus the potential at which the electron ends which is the right moving 
potential in the right contact mu right contact r okay now how do we find mu right contact r mu right contact r appears here and we can express it using this equality by quantities that we know mu left contact right movers appears here mu right contact left movers suppose this is given and mu right contact left movers it's the same as this one here we have mu right movers right contact uh, right contact right movers and right contact left movers okay so we want to use this expression to work out the um, potential mu right contact right movers so since we have the same prefactors we find m over n mu left contact right movers and now we take already this part together um, which gives us a minus um, n over n would be 1 mu rl minus 1 mu rl cancels so what remains is minus m over n mu r l and this is equal to well we simplify this to m over n times mu l r minus mu r l and this is equal to if we look at the right hand side to mu r r minus mu r l so we are interested in working out mu of the right contact for the right movers and then taking this difference so here is the quantity that we are interested in okay so we can write it as we can write this difference as mu l r minus mu r r is equal to mu l r minus and now for this expression we use m over n times this difference mu l r minus mu r l and then there's this additional term mu r l which would be added on the left hand side but since we subtract we have minus mu r l now you see there's a difference mu left contact right movers minus mu right contact left movers which again appears here so in total we find this voltage difference to be 1 minus m over n times the electrochemical potential in the left contact for right movers minus the electrochemical potential in the right contact for left movers okay so this is the voltage drop an electron experiences that moves from the left contact at the fermi energy to the right contact it will dissipate this amount of energy and this of course must be related to the voltage drop between the two contact regions now, since we know 
that the current in the system is given by any of these expressions, we can now work out the resistance. This is the voltage drop. And now we have to divide it by the current, for example, uh, in this expression. So we find the resistance of our structure as the voltage drop. The voltage drop is this energy difference divided by an elementary charge. So it would be 1 minus m over n times mu left contact right movers minus mu right contact left movers divided by an elementary charge and now divided by the current and for the current we take this expression here because it contains the same difference of electrochemical potentials that we have here and we can cancel them later on so we have to divide by e over h e over h gives an e squared over h in total times the number of modes m times this difference mu left contact right movers minus mu right contact left movers and this is equal to now we take the prefactor h over e squared in front and here we have the um, fraction n minus m divided by n from the numerator and this has to be divided by m so this is our simplified result and this can of course be written as h over e squared times 1 over m minus 1 over n so this is the result we had to show in this exercise now it's very interesting and instructive to consider now the limiting case that we encountered in the lecture where the contact region out here um, would be infinitely large if the contact region is infinitely large the number of modes that it supports the number n of modes goes to infinity if n goes to infinity in this expression we recover our previous result which is h over e squared times 1 over the number of modes as I mentioned in the beginning it's also interesting to see that the contact resistance going from n to m modes is just the difference of the contact resistances that we would have if we would go from an infinite reservoir into m modes minus the contact resistance that we get going from an infinite contact into n modes so it is as if the voltage drop into for coupling from an infinite reservoir into this section has already been subtracted from the contact resistance of this one so if we would put voltage probes here and there to measure the resistance across the narrow section we would in indeed find this voltage drop or this resistance.